In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Venerable Pius XII, pray for us. Hello YouTube, this is uh, the fourth video I'm doing in this series on Outside of the Church There Is No Salvation. And I have a lot to cover here, so I'm going to go quickly. I'm going to talk about the letter from the Holy Office that was sent regarding the Father Feeney issue back in the 1940s. If you're not familiar with that, I really don't have time to, to uh, develop kind of a, a, an historical perspective. I just would ask you to Google it and you can read all about it. But I'm going to assume here that, that my audience already knows all the details about this. So let's take a look at the letter. Okay, This letter from the Holy Office was sent I think in 1949 and it was called uh, Protocol 122-49. Uh, I guess 49 refers to the year that it was written. Okay, And a protocol letter um, is not some sort of a final word on anything. It's actually just an opening word. Uh, as opposed to a final word. That's what the word protocol means. Um, this letter was never published um, in the Acts of the Apostolic See, and therefore it's not uh, officially binding on anyone's conscience. Okay, It's not binding on me or you. It's just a private letter, a protocol. Okay, These things are clearly taught in that dogmatic letter which was issued by the Sovereign Pontiff, Pope Pius XII, on June 29, 1943 called the, uh, the mystical body of Christ, Mystici Corporis Christi. For in this letter, the sovereign pontiff clearly distinguishes between those who are actually incorporated into the church as members and those who are united to the church only by desire. Now notice the word in blue here, uh, united, that's a very critical word. Um, if you're united to the church somehow, then you certainly might be considered to be in the church um, in some way. So let's, you know, we need to see about that, okay? So they're, they're paraphrasing Pope Pius XII here, and they're using the word united, okay? He, apparently, Pope Pius XII is teaching that there are those who are united to the church, but only by desire. Okay, moving on, the letter says, discussing the members of which the mystical body is composed here on earth, the same August Pontiff says, actually, only those are to be included as members of the church who have been baptized and profess the true faith and who have not been so unfortunate as to separate themselves from the unity of the body. Uh, wow, that's, that's a pretty powerful statement, and I'm, I don't have time to dwell here. Maybe we'll come back to this, but that's certainly a statement that uh, I'm sure Father Feeney would have no problem using in his own defense. This is very clear. Um, only those are to be considered members who have been validly baptized and who profess the true faith. That's very limiting, isn't it? It's kind of different than what we've been led to believe over the past 40 years or so. And this is not a very ancient pope or anything. This is a fairly modern pope, Pope Pius XII, uh, venerable Pope Pius XII. Okay, toward the end of this same encyclical letter, letter, when most affectionately inviting to unity those who do not belong to the body of the Catholic Church, he mentions those who are related to the mystical body of the Redeemer by a certain unconscious yearning and desire. Notice here they're quoting the encyclical, not simply paraphrasing it, and the blue word, which started out as united, now we see really isn't united, but it's related, okay, right there. And that's a, that's a their rendition of what he actually said. So I find that very interesting. The word united has, has morphed into related, which is extremely different. And these he by no means excludes from eternal salvation, but on the other hand states that they are in a condition in which they cannot be sure of their salvation. Hmm since they still remain deprived of those many heavenly gifts and helps which can only be enjoyed in the Catholic Church. Again, here's a quotation. Um, with these wise words, he reproves both those who exclude from eternal salvation, all united to the Church only by implicit desire, and those who falsely assert that men can be saved equally well in every religion. Notice the blue word here is turned back into united. So it started out as united, as a paraphrase. Then when we found that they actually quoted Pope Pius XII, we see it wasn't united at all, but it was related. But now when they're, they're recapitulating, it has morphed back into united. All right, so I would ask the uh, secretary of the Holy Office who wrote this letter, um, of course he's deceased now, but if I was living back then, I would ask him to explain what he meant by that. Why, why was he paraphrased as saying united, um, when in fact he didn't say that. He said something very different. Um, and then going on it says, but it must not be thought that any kind of desire of entering the church suffices that one may be saved. It is 
necessary that the desire for which one is related to the church be animated by perfect charity and be accompanied by supernatural faith. Notice the blue word is back here, and now it's morphed into related again. So, I don't know, it's going back and forth, and that's certainly uh, one indication that this by no means is some sort of final definitive word on this subject. I mean, it can't decide what, what, the, church, what the Pope really said. Was it united or related? We don't know. Well, luckily, we do have the Pope's encyclical, both in Latin and in the official English translation. Let's take a look at that. Um, this is what the Pope actually wrote, okay? As you know, venerable brethren, from the very beginning of our pontificate, we have committed to the protection and guidance of heaven those who do not belong to the visible body of the Catholic Church. So it's talking about a group of people here that I've outlined in red, okay? It's referring to them as those, okay? And they do not belong to the Church. So that would be, well... Everyone who's not Catholic, okay, Protestants, you know, Jews, Muslims, you know, atheists, what have you, okay, and he's he's committing to heaven to, to, that they be protected and guided, okay, guided where, well, obviously he wants them to be guided into the church. We ask each and every one of them, so we're still talking about the same group of people, to correspond to the interior movements of grace and to seek to withdraw from that state in which they cannot be sure of their salvation. For even though by an unconscious desire and longing, they are ordered towards or disposed towards the mystical body, the Redeemer. Now that's different. Here's that blue word again, but this time it shows up as uh, ordered towards or disposed towards. And that's different than either united or related. Okay, This is what the Pope actually said. Now here's the, the Latin, et siamsi in scio. This is, you know, unconscious. Uh, quodam desiderio ac vodo, okay, ad mysticum redemptoris corpus ordinentor. The key words here are ad ordinentor, all right, and that, that's the words in blue. And they mean ordered towards or disposed towards, okay. Ordinentor means either ordered or disposed, and ad means towards. Okay, so we can see very clearly that that isn't even related. You know, I wouldn't translate that as related, because related is such a general term, it's, it, it can mean anything. But it's very specific, it's, it's being disposed towards the church. Well, every human being ever created was disposed towards his final end, which is heaven. That's what God created every man for. And this is Catholic teaching, okay? So every single human being is ordered towards entering into the church, because that's how one is saved. We can see that in Pope Pius XI's teaching here in, in Mortalium Animos. Okay, they, he's talking about all religions, they all in different ways manifest and signify that sense which is inborn in us all and by which we are led to God and to the obedient acknowledgement of his rule. Okay, so all men have this kind of a uh, sense which Pope Pius XII is calling a uh, kind of an unconscious desire uh, which orders us towards entry into the church. Okay, so it's, it's talking about every single human being here, okay? For even though they, by an unconscious desire and longing, they are ordered and disposed towards the mystical body of the Redeemer. This is every single person who's not Catholic. Okay? This isn't like a special group of that larger group. But this is the larger group. There is no special group, okay? It's not like, the, the, like there's a group of infidels out there, and then there's a subset of those who have goodwill and who have, you know, perfect charity, and they... They have a special ordering, a special unity with the church. And that's what makes them a subgroup. No, Pope Pius XII doesn't make such a distinction. He's simply talking about every single person who's not Catholic. That's all he's talking about. Okay, they still remain deprived of those many heavenly gifts and helps which can only be enjoyed in the Catholic Church. Okay, well, obviously they're not in the Catholic Church. Otherwise, they would have these heavenly gifts and helps. Therefore, may they enter into Catholic unity and join with us in the one organic God of Christ. May they, together with us, run onto the head. Okay, so he's, he's specifically praying that, that they do enter the church. All right, so I just wanted to point that out there. Um, we're, we're running out of time here, but what the, the, the protocol of the Holy Office was saying is something really different than what the Pope said. And I find it interesting that a few years later the Pope wrote in Humani Generis, some reduced to a meaningless formula the necessity of belonging to the true church in order to gain eternal salvation. These and like errors, it is clear, have crept in among certain of our sons who have deceived, but we were deceived by imprudent zeal for souls. 
So I have to leave it there. May God bless us all. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy